touchy little thing, I say. All hands are on decks these days, so to speak. <laughs> New generation, grand old Duke of York, doesn't cut it any more. <laughs> oh, hello there. This is Hummer's Corner. Wait, no, that's terrible given last episode's discussion. <laughs> Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Speaker's Corner, and I am your host, Tim Byron. And yes, you caught me by surprise, because we are expecting a new addition to our family soon. <laughs> yes, that's right, we're having a baby. <laughs> well, to be exactly accurate, my lovely other half is having our third child. All I did was supply the uh, uh, seed. Yes. That's it. It's something that almighty fellow values above everything else. Except, perhaps, foreskins. Mm. Odd chap, that one. Anyway, you caught me in a bit of a hum as I was contemplating the types of songs a young parent sings to their infant. And what better than that earworm? Huh? <laughs> did you know it started in South Korea? Well, the current smash hit did anyway, and that will be the focus of today's episode. No, 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 not a ruddy bloody baby shark, you numpties. Oh, crikey, can a bloke get a little bit of help every now and again, eh? Hey, hey, hey. I'm about to have a bloody fur baby, mate. Come on, give us a break, would you? Give us a hand. Huh? Huh? No, today's discussion will be all about... Wait for it. Yes, a Korean production company in Seoul named Pinkfong remixed and recreated Baby Shark to make it the ubiquitous monster it is. It went from a baby shark to a megalodon. <laughs> Crickets, huh? Crickets? <laughs> That's even worse, Bill. Leave it at that. Leave it there, please. Yes, no more. Anyway, that video now has over eight and a half billion views as of this episode. That's almost a billion more views as there are people on the planet. Hmm. However, one can easily assume almost all those views are from the same roughly 10,000 knackered parents putting it on an endless loop for their little ones. Hmm? Right then, so what is K-pop? How did it start? Who is the biggest attraction in the genre? <gasps> Well, if you're savvy enough to watch this, then you already very likely know that the answer to the last question was, as to what K-pop is, it's not exactly pop music, uh, although it can be. Uh, it's more of a melange of different types of music emanating from South Korea and or Korean speakers. These different genres of music run the gamut from the obvious pop to rap to R&B to salsa to rock to pretty much any contemporary sound. K-pop effectively started in 1992 through its first stars, Seo Taji, mm. and boys, whose hit Nan Arayo, or I Know, was the nation's youth's first foray away from traditional Korean music, also called Trot. It was for many their first exposure to hip-hop and would eventually lead to a burgeoning genre that would explode worldwide with multiple hits, including Baby Shark and Gangnam Style. No. Stop it. Enough of that. Don't do it again. Ever. Thank you. The K-pop one generally associates with the term and the connection I will be referring to throughout this video is Korean Idol Pop, which is the splashy, flashy, whiz-bangy popular music coming at you via those sleekly produced idols such as BTS. Yes, a BTS was the answer to the final question, BTW. Hmm. This version of K-pop has a grip on the internet, inspiring them to fawn over their beloved idols while pushing for more progressive mindsets and policies. They can dominate racist and bigoted hashtags and even form up a la massive unstoppable Voltron to curtail a certain someone's rallies and other hate fests. Oh, shoo, shoo. Bugger off. Leave. Oh, you're already out of the public eye. Toddle off for good already, yes. Hmm? Actually, Mebus tried to hold another rally somewhere. You never know. There might be enough bigots and dickheads left to follow you. Right, K-pop. Blimey, what a transition. <sighs> From one wholly unlikable grifter to affable and precocious global superstars, the idol craze is ubiquitous, 
and purposefully so. In fact, K-pop is not only about the music, but the entire experience. A synthesis of sorts, highlighting flashy visuals, highly choreographed dance sequences, stylized videos on par with cinematic quality, catchy earworms and highly glossy figures cut out of fashion magazines. This is by no means accidental, as the government itself lends a hand in crafting these idols for global consumption, because doing so helps lift South Korea's presence. <laughs> Can you imagine that? A government manipulating its youth to achieve global domination? The Germans tried it with the Hitler Youth Army. It's essentially a farm system in which talent agencies groom candidates by settling them in a house to figure out how they coalesce and teach them a variety of skills, primarily dancing, as choreography is such a key component of K-pop, but also languages, specifically Japanese and English, as Japan and the Western world are the two largest audiences outside of Korea, possibly even more so than South Korea itself, certainly bigger than J-pop in Japan. Either way, it's essentially Big Brother, but training them up to be global superstars. <laughs> Big Brother is not only watching, but instructing. Hmm. You could never get too far away. Of course, we cannot talk about Korean pop idols without talking about BTS. If you don't know who they are, then imagine all of the biggest boy bands of all time. Combine them and you might get a fraction of BTS's popularity. Actually, you won't have to do too much imagining, as we have brilliant tutorials from the eminently talented K.O., whose videos you can watch on this channel on how to draw Jimin, and the entire group themselves. <laughs> BTS stands for Bangtang Sonyodan, and that translates to Bulletproof Boy Scouts. <laughs> Considering who founded the Boy Scouts, that is quite the appropriate name, because General Robert Baden-Powell was a badass in his own right, and ostensibly bulletproof. His story and the Boy Scouts' founding might be a discussion for another day. But today's topic is about boy bands, not 19th century spies. Although, maybe, maybe, BTS is part of an elaborate Korean plot to infiltrate other countries through ensorcelled youth that can topple governments via hashtags and online presence. Possible, but unlikely. Maybe not. They're far too wholesome for that. Or are they? <laughs> BTS may stand for Bulletproof Boy Scouts originally, but now the acronym has a retcon by signifying Beyond the Scene. The group consists of seven members, three of whom were in the group's initial founding. Oh dear, that's RM, short for Rap Monster. <laughs> no relation to Cookie Monster, right? We don't think so. He's one of the group's rappers, along with Suga, who is the lead rapper and one of its founding members, who met BTS's parent company's founder and CEO, Bang C. Hayek, or Hitman Bang, early. More on that later. The last of the three founding members is J-Hope, who is a main dancer and provides raps and vocals. This entire segment makes me feel like a thousand years old, but trust me that I am not. Really. I'm not. I'm not that old at all. Anyway, age is a state of mind, and my mind is 12. The other four members are Jin, whose role is accompanying vocals and visual entertainment, and who is uh, worldwide handsome, although I think that title went to every one of them at some point. Jimin, the bloke with the pink hair, is the star of one of our Knockout Artists KO tutorials that happens to be the lead vocalist and a main dancer. V, or Tay Tay, the lead dancer that also supplies vocals and visual flair. And finally, Jungkook, haha, another main vocalist whose role also includes dancing and rapping. Now, I hope I got that right. Hmm, perhaps. Goodness gracious. Uh, did I get them all? I think so. That's the lot of them, and there is a frightening amount of information out there about them on the Tinter web, but in a mostly innocent type way, you know, favourite colour, emoji, that kind of thing. But BTS fandom is a prevailing social badge of honour that members of the army proudly festoon upon themselves like a Boy Scout merit badge. And more on that 
a little later. Now, some of the members didn't actually consider becoming part of a boy band or an idol group. Suga, for example, wanted to make a name for himself as a rapper and met with Hitman Bang, who was a producer in his own right. Suga joined his big hit company and Bang asked him to join a group with fresh recruits RM and J-Hope that would be a Korean hip-hop act. Mm. Mm. The other members rather clustered towards these three after some time like extreme gravity. V was actually joining a friend at an audition and ended up with his part. Jungkook was a signee after a talent show called Superstar K dropped him. However, RM's rapping impressed this highly sought-after star enough for him to join the group. Jimin joined after his teacher urged him to do so, and Big Hit essentially picked up Jin off the street. At least, according to him. And yes, he does sound a bit like a teeny bopper, to be honest. Uh, I only really know this after much extensive research, and by research I mean that I asked my oldest son, Ren's classmate, about them, and uh, she banged on about them and on and on, providing me with reams of pages full of information about these lads. Now, the group has become so massive that Hitman Bang put up Big Hit as an IPO and is a billionaire of the firm's success. The group all have shares in the company, so not only have they made impressive amounts of money from Big Hit, but are now reaping what they've created. And you've got to wonder, what makes BTS so immensely popular? Sure, they have catchy songs and overly produced visuals with painstaking choreographic numbers, but loads of groups worldwide have that. What makes the group stand out from such an oversaturated market? One could argue that it is, uh, well, they're real. Their songs are sincere despite the brazen production because they sing and rap about more than just silly love songs, as Paul McCartney once called them. They delve into social issues and mental health in their tracks, unlike most pop does, and that level of honesty provides a deep connection to the army, a tether to the wayward despite their movie star looks. Oh! <laughs> The army! I almost forgot. One cannot talk about BTS without mentioning their fans. ARMY is not just an esoteric idiosyncrasy, but an acronym that stands for Adorable Representative MC for Youth, with the MC meaning Master of Ceremony or Rapper. Ha <laughs> ha! Hip, hop, hip, hip. Hip it, hip it, hip, hip, hop it, don't stop the rocking to the bang, bang, boogie, sit up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. Now, I'll just leave that there. Uh, yes, it's really a term of pride for members, and this army is indeed legion. However, for really, really good reasons. They have collaborated to derail a certain someone's <coughs> orange cockwombles rally, but they've collectively done numerous good work, such as matching BTS's million-dollar donation to the Black Lives Matter movement, making micro-donations to revitalise rainforests, adopting whales, providing funds for Rwandan youths to have dance lessons, along with raising money to help feed LGBTQ plus youth all around the world. Huh. This relationship between the army and BTS is symbiotic and mutual, as RM says, that they recharge one another's batteries because BTS feels a portion of responsibility for all of the army's philanthropic endeavours. The army's influence is so vast that American late-night shows have felt the need to invite BTS onto their programmes to capture a portion of that massive audience. <laughs> mm try to exploit a fandom's interest in their group for views? Who would ever do such a thing? <laughs> Make sure to check out those drawing tutorials. Of course, there is a negative side to fandom. The stans. Stan is a portmanteau. That is a word that combines two terms, fan and stalker. Ha, yikes. <laughs> Nobody likes a stalker. I, I guess... Unless you're a stalker, in which case you're the one having fun. Well, Stan has a more harmless connotation in online conversation, but there have been serious enough instances of stalker interaction for BTS that they felt the need to record songs about it. At least, that's what some have speculated. The Korean term for stalker is Seisang, and it actually translates to private life, and these hardcore fans have impacted the group's private lives. There are instances of Seisang's recording the lads as they try on new clothes and even use the loo. <laughs> Yikes, that's not a good place for a camera. Do not be like those fans. No, 
private time in the toilet, thank you very much. Gather together for good causes under the banner of your favourite group, but no matter how famous a person is, they are still a person. Hmm. Nothing wrong with fandom, as long as it doesn't go to the extremes, like, well, everything, really. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it may have seemed an unconventional episode for yours truly, but it truly was a fascinating dive into the world's most popular musical group and its genre. Make sure to share, subscribe, like, comment and leave a question. Send in your ideas for future episodes and... Who knows? You may get a shout-out for it. And also remember to check out Knockout's tutorials on how to draw the band members and... Adorable little Moshi. Jimin, all linked at the end of the video and in the description. As always, this is Speaker's Corner. I am the host, Tim Byron. Ta-ta, my loves. And of course, don't forget to check Almighty Answers, upcoming VR video with music by Vlad... Uh, whatever his name is. Hmm. Pip-pip, cheerio, and... Here's looking at you, kid. Hello again, my lovelies. Thank you so much for watching that video. It really means a lot. Um, well, what can I say? Keep the smile going. Do remember to subscribe and ring that bell. It helps out like you wouldn't believe. It just makes me so happy. Can you see this big smile of mine? <laughs> keep calm, carry on, keep a stiff upper lip, and uh, if you like, there's another channel in the description. Almighty answers. <laughs> Definitely worth a watch. Best of British to you, pip pip cheerio, and until next time, here's looking at you, kid. <laughs>